So let me talk about SHIM. So Flightboard's the only system in the world that allows the stabilizer to be adjusted. So changing the angle of the stabilizer really makes a big change in terms of the way the board feels. We've got these little shims here. They come with the flight board. So there's, there's six of them. Start off at zero degrees and they go through to five degrees. As the number goes higher, you get more front foot pressure and you also get more turning response on the wing. As you go lower, you get less front foot pressure, particularly as you go faster, because the stabilizer's got less angle. And as you create more forward momentum, that angle creates a whole lot of down force that you've got to compensate with your body weight by standing further forward on the board and putting more force through your front, front leg. Over time, since we launched the first flight board, we've, we, we've learned through feedback and, and, and writing a lot ourselves that you really want to be working with shims in the zero to three range. You know, the four and five shims are really shims that you really don't need to use. If you're an advanced rider and you want to ride fast and you don't want to have that front foot pressure, use a zero shim or, or, or one shim. If you ride a little bit slower and you want to be able to really throw the board around and you want that pitch stability where it's not going to do this as much, use a higher number like a one or a two shim. Um, if you're a beginner, probably start off with a one or a two shim as you ride faster, go down to zero. Or if you want to do more response, you know, keep it on a two shim. So, so that's a little bit about shims. Um, let's go to wings. The cruiser wing is still the best wing in the world for somebody that wants to learn how to flight board or e-foil. It's been designed really carefully for stability. It's got sweep that gives it pitch stability. It's got wing tips that turn down for safety. When you fall, you're more likely to hit the side of the wing rather than the point, pointy tip of the wing. Every person flight boarding for the first time should start off with a cruiser wing. It's a great wing. You can still take off the propeller guard with a cruiser wing and go out and ride waves on it with a true glide prop. It's a great wing. If you want more response and more speed, go to the fly wing next. The fly wing is a smaller wing. It's 800 centimeters squared instead of, um, instead of 1100 for the cruiser wing. Um, it's higher aspect. It's gonna allow you to ride faster and have more of a roll rate. Taking off the propeller guard, once you're confident and you're not gonna hurt yourself, you know you're always gonna let go of the trigger when you fall and jump away from the board, and you're not gonna share your board with, with beginners, take off the propeller guard. That is probably the number one thing that's gonna increase response of the board and make it reduce that latency of response. So that's the next step after you progress to the, to the flyer wing. Uh, take off the propeller guard, go to a lower number shim level for riding faster. Then it's another big step change to these new flow wings. Start off with a, a bigger flow wing, 1100 um, is good. 1100S is a great wing or 1300S. The S wings are lower aspect. These wings are really responsive. So if you've used a flyer wing, you will know there's a big difference between the flyer wing and the cruiser wing. When you go to a flow wing, that difference is that difference again times three. It really is that responsive. So start off with one of the big flow wings first. Um, and, and then you can tailor it from there depending upon your, how you want to ride. If you ride in flat water, go with the smaller flow wing. The most responsive wing, which I've been riding recently, is the Flow 900S or the Flow S900. That's our most responsive wing. It is crazy. It really is like riding a skateboard with loose trucks. Being a small wing, it can still ride relatively fast and it will scare you how, I mean, literally you think about flexing your muscle in your little toe and you'll be turning, it's, it's instant. Um, so that's the most extreme wing. If you want to ride waves, put this guy on your, which is the Flow 1300 on your, um, on your Pro and you can go out and, and have a lot of lift and ride really slowly on waves and really use the wave energy to ride. And that's what this has been designed for. It's been designed for slower speed, not more speed. So hopefully that gives you some information on how you can take your pro board and, and take it to the next level by working with shims, taking off the duct and experimenting with some of the new wings. And I forgot our race wing. This is an awesome wing as well. So if you're familiar with the fly wing, this feels very similar to the fly wing, but it's a scaled down high performance version. This is 700 square centimeters instead of 800. It's got less of that anhedral. Um, you know, you've got to be careful. It's got pointier tips and it's higher aspect. This is a great wing. So this is a wing that'll take you over 55 kilometers an hour. 
um, if you want to push speed in a straight line. It, it needs a bit more force to make it turn than the flow wings, quite a lot more force, but that gives you good feedback. It's like snowboarding with hard boots. This is another great wing as well to put on your pro board. If you're buying an Ultra, you're a competent rider. You can already flight board, you've already ridden a pro, you've probably taken the propeller guard off and you've used a fly wing already. Um, the Ultra is not an easy board to get up on, it takes a different technique. Um, I'm 90 kilos, I've seen a 100 kilo rider use the Ultra, but it's not easy. You've got to get the board planing by trimming the board and keeping it very flat. Every bit of angle takes away forward thrust from the propeller. So if you're, if you're a beginner and you're riding around with the nose up like this, you're actually losing a lot of the energy from the motor and the battery just into holding you up instead of moving you forward. If you're doing that, you're going to struggle to get up on the Ultra. So you need to be competent, get the board planing, then pop up. Um, so you're an advanced rider and you've already used the fly wing. So the fly wing becomes like the starting point for riding on an Ultra. That's the easiest wing on an Ultra. And then it goes from there into the race wing for more speed. Um, and it goes into the flow wings. If you're riding in flat water, go for a smaller flow wing, a 9 or 1100 flow wing, uh, maybe an S, which has a bit more response unless you want efficiency, in which case the higher aspect uh, flow 1100 or 900 are great. If you're riding waves, then you want a bigger wing on the Ultra so that you can turn the motor off. My favorite wing for riding waves is the Flow 1100. I love it. Um, certainly the Flow 1300 will allow my heavier weight to catch a smaller wave, but I don't really want to ride waves that small and that slowly. I want to challenge myself to do top to bottom turns on the wave, which means the Flow 1100 is the one wing that I will use in the waves. It's Kiahi, who's one of our team riders' favorite wing in the waves. Adam Bennett, who's one of the best foilers in the world, loves the Flow 1100 on an Ultra. So they're great wings for the waves. Flat water, go 900. Um, faster wings. You don't have the waves as a challenge, so your speed becomes your challenge and you want a smaller wing. So hopefully that's some good information on that. If you're a heavy rider on the Ultra, go for a bigger wing, 11 or 1300. If you're a lighter rider, go for the 900 wings or the race wing or the fly wing. So hopefully that helps on the Ultra.